Hi, how are you doing? Thanks for joining me for another little video. A uh, bit of an update on the recovery situation. Not quite there yet. Um, I have been trying to do a little bit of racing now and then, but I just can't manage it. Sitting in the rig gets uncomfortable pretty quickly and I can't put enough pressure on the brake pedal yet to be competitive at all. So unfortunately, I've got a little bit of time left before I can do anything proper. But I'm going to do a little quick video today just based on this uh, wheel that I bought a little while ago. Um, so what I'm going to do is pop the camera behind me so we can look at the wheel and I'm going to see what it's like in VR. So I'll jump into ACC or something and we'll see if I can actually work it without being able to see. So stay tuned. Okay, so um, I'll give you a quick rundown of what I've done to the wheel to configure it, which is not a lot. All I've done is replace some of the button caps. So I've taken off the ones that came with the wheel and replace them with some of the extra ones. Now, I can't obviously see them in VR, so it doesn't really matter, but having some of the caps there with, and others not actually gives a different feel, feel to the um, to the button, so that, you know, uh, when it's got the cap on it, it's kind of smooth and rounded. When it hasn't, it's got a harder edge, it's got an indent in it. So, you know, I can use that to tell while I'm pressing. Um, so briefly, um, for ACC, which is the sim I'm going to jump into right now, um, I've got my flashes set to there, I've got my headlights on that button, I've got my windscreen wipers over there, I've got my race logic display there, uh, I've got my, my pit limiter there. This button isn't mapped in game, I use it for my Discord push to talk, so it's kind of like a radio. Um, I've got my brake balance mapped to that, that's quite nice for brake balance actually, because you can um, turn them very easily and adjust it. I don't have this one mapped to anything because the only thing left to do was the engine map and as I just said these are very easy to turn so I didn't want to inadvertently change my engine map. Um, I don't have the analog stick um, assigned to anything um, but the two inboard uh, red buttons I've got that one on ignition and that one for start, engine start. Um, the toggles are the left toggle is for displaying or paging the car's dashboard display. The right toggle is for um, the multifunction display. And I use the multi switch, or the, sorry, the funky switch here to navigate around the multifunction display. Got traction control on this rotary and ABS on that rotary. The middle rotary can't actually map to anything. Um, this button down here does the general HUD. And then I've got my engine map mapped to these two buttons here, which is better because there's, there's far more sort of, you know, positivity with those rather than, whoops, knocked my map, didn't notice, now the car's running really lean. Right, so I'm in the Lambo at the Nürburgring on a pretty gloomy day, but that's good because it means the frame rate's a bit better if we don't have lots of sun and stuff. Um, <laughs> this guy's gloves are bright, very bright. So let's see if we can find, first of all, the HUD button. Now you can't see the HUD on the feed, but I can. So yeah, I can cycle through my head, no problem. And if I hold and press, it goes away. So first of all, ignition. Get the B10 on. So yeah, so pit limiter, that's no problem, that works. Got the race logic display so I can cycle through my uh, modes there. The car's dashboard display, so easy to feel. Now obviously I'm stationary so it might be a different thing. I've got the multi-function display although I think I've got to hit the HUD first. That doesn't seem to work. It's just basic HUD. Oh there you go, yeah it does. Now I'm sorry you can't actually see that but I just wanted to make sure it works. Just turn that all off. Okay, if I leave the HUD on there I can still see that, that's cool. Um, what else did I do? Right, so yeah, I've got the trash control. So you can see that's changing down there. Got the ABS. It's a little bit of a fiddle. So that's the centre one. That's the right hand side one. So the ABS is six, traction controls at six. Let's um, get out onto the track and see if this all works as I'm driving. So I should have my pit limit run, although I'm not in the pit lane anymore, so there's no point in that. That's also the wrong button, so already I've, I've cocked up. So the wheel feels really good. It's got more of a one-to-one -one 
sense uh, that a, than a circular rim has, particularly in in this title, because obviously the, these are all GT cars, so very few of them actually have circular rims. So my hands feel like they are where this guy's hands are. There's quite a lot of detail coming through the rim. Got cold tyres so the car's all over the shop. Also this rim is slightly smaller than what I'm used to. So it feels a lot more precise. Gear shifters feel great as well. So they're the magnetic ones. So they're nice and chunky and good solid feeling to them. Yeah, the wheel feels really nice. So, let's try and do some stuff now with the wheel. So, I found the, the dashboard page quite easily. Cocking up the corner because I'm kind of trying to concentrate on figuring out where things are on the wheel right now. So I think I just switched the headlights on. I don't know, can't really tell because it's light out. There's a windscreen wiper, that works. <laughs> Goes faster. I think if I hold it down, it'll go off. There you go. So there's the flashes, you can see on the on the dash there it's flat blinking away. That's not the right gear. I'm driving terribly at the moment because well, for one thing this is my first time in the road for quite a long time. And secondly, I'm sort of not really paying attention. So just switching my race logic display to the time that I spent on track, which is three minutes and twenty seconds, so I can easily put my thumb on the radio button there, and that's obvious what that is. And then the one next to it, I know that that's pit limiter. So the only thing I am thinking is. I'm toying with the idea of altering my traction control, but I don't want to take my hands off the edge of the wheel because that took a little bit of finding. So I drop the TC one. Let's drop it again. No, where is it? There it is, yep, yeah, so I guess it'll take a little bit of time for me to dial in the locations of these before I can get my hands to go to them like immediately. So there's the ABS, dial that down a bit. We've got the brake, brake bias there, so we're at 60% on the front. Just dialed it up a little bit so we can, so we can kind of see that's dialing up there, 62%. Let's put that down. So these thumb controls are actually quite nice. In fact, I haven't locked it by accident yet, so I might even put the um, engine map on the other one. Well, I'm going to do one more lap. So the wheel feels really, really nice. It's got a good, it's got a good one-to-one -one relationship with what I'm seeing in the, the VR headset. It's communicating the 
forces really really well but then I would imagine it would because it's made out of carbon fibre it's stiff as hell it's nice and light the uh, the wheelbase here is going to have no problem rotating it Got a little bit of extra rotation through that corner which I didn't really want but I felt it so I could correct for it this car's engine sounds incredible Right, let's jump into the pits. Find the limiter button, which is that one. There you go. So, I think that even in VR, the complexity of the wheel isn't really a problem. Um, I didn't need my limiter on just yet, but never mind. Um, so, the complexity of the, uh, the wheel here in VR isn't actually a problem. It's just going to take a little bit of time for me to learn where everything is by feel but yeah quite frankly I'm really happy with this the wheel feels absolutely great this uh, the Alcantara on the side here feels really nice My hands although I'm probably gonna end up getting it gummed up with uh, sweat and crap at some point I'll just use the ignition to kill the engine so yeah that's pretty cool Right then, so in conclusion, yeah, this thing's great. I like it. I'm glad I bought it. So if you're thinking of getting one, yeah, do it. <laughs> it's great. You can't go wrong with this, really. Um, I was actually really surprised about the form factor. It played a much bigger part in my experience than I thought it would. Um, and it might be because my position on the wheel is slightly different, because perhaps with a D-rim, I'd be have my hands higher up, perhaps. I don't know. Um, because the D-Rim's got these kind of thumb structures as well to rest your thumbs on. So I don't know what it is about it, but there's certainly a much stronger connection between the physical unit and the virtual one um, with this rim. I don't know why, but it just feels far more like it does, you know, in the game. There's a, there's a real good sort of connection there. Um, can't really explain it any, any better than that, really. Um, as far as the complexity goes, yeah, my thoughts about not being able to find stuff or fumbling around to find stuff uh, kind of justified it is a little bit complex I found it a little bit tricky to find the uh, the rotary encoders um, without actually being you know, you know able to see them but I'm thinking that in time I'll be able to fine-tune that muscle memory and, and just just you know go straight to them um, it's funny though because even though in you know if I didn't use VR and I had a screen in front of me and I was just driving along I would be using my peripheral vision to locate them but because you don't even have that in VR it becomes quite a bit more challenging to find stuff but I'm pretty confident I'll be able to do it so yeah it is there's there's a lot of stuff on this but I'm thinking for VR users like you know myself and if you're a VR user I think that it's not really a worry you will learn in time anyway I'm gonna leave the video there so thank you very much for joining me and I shall catch you next time and hopefully I'll be uh, better enough to be able to actually go and do something proper. See you then.